Hello everybody, I forgot one thing. Just remember, if you're not caught up into the clouds, it is the wrong Messiah. Remember that. The false Messiah comes first. Remember that. Very important. Most of the church world is going to miss that. This is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If you're not caught up together in the clouds in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. All right. Now I'm going to now we're going to start the Bible study. Greetings, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8:12. Jesus said, "I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life." People, I do not think this we are ever going to go back to the way we were. I think we are coming into the well, I won't say the end times, but uh, I think the United States is going into permanent, at least partial, type lockdown. I'm getting all kinds of things that I'm reading about lockdowns and some of the plans that they have. Let's take a look at John chapter 16, verse 1. Jesus speaking, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. That's right. Are you offended by the words of Jesus? We're going to cover uh, that when uh, the next verse. Verse 2. They. Who's they? They shall put you out of of the synagogues and who who hangs out at the synagogues right yea the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth god service and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me they don't know God the Son, and they don't know God the Father either, because they don't know that God the Father sent the Son. Therefore, if you don't have the one, you don't have the other. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to them, I'm sorry, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Now Christ is getting ready to die. Verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter, uh, who's the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. The Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he will not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Ever been to a Pentecostal church where they constantly talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit? Let's uh, speak in tongues, a bunch of gibberish that nobody can understand. Is that of God? Well, Jesus just said that the Holy Spirit, he will, for he will not speak of himself. You know, he, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you to Jesus, if it's the true Holy Spirit. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things of to come. He shall glorify me. Who? Who's he? The Holy Spirit. He shall glorify me. Jesus is speaking. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So if you're going to a Pentecostal church and they're bragging on the Holy Spirit this and the Holy Spirit that and the Holy Spirit is guide you to Christ. I mean, that's just the way it is. In Matthew 11, 16, uh, I'm sorry, 11 and verse 6, Jesus said, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And uh, in Matthew 24, verse 10, we read, and then many, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. In John 15, 18, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. And people, our own families are going to betray us. And that's even in Scripture. In Matthew 24, 10, didn't we read? And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I mean, you know, it's pretty clear, really. In Mark 13, in verse 12, now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father of the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Wow. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Uh, there's already different states that have tip lines, hotlines, uh, numbers that they tell people to call to turn in their neighbors that are not uh, observing the quarantine. I mean, really. Um, they're, uh, and they're getting hundreds of calls. I mean, your neighbors... These people, I just, I don't think, uh, I honestly don't believe that 10% of the people that attend churches are honestly saved. I think it's less than that. It's probably, it may not even be 5%. It, it might only be 3%, 2 or 3%. You know, take 100 people in a church, 100, a church with 100 people in it, close down all the doors with uh, people with guns and say, you know what? People, uh, I want to kill every one of you uh, Christians. 
And uh, if anybody's here willing to die for Christ, I'll be happy to send you on your way. But if all of you, any of you will deny Christ, I'll let you walk out this door right now. And you line them up and put a gun to their head and say, deny Christ or die for Christ, your pick. I bet you 97 out of 100 of those people would deny Jesus to save their life right then and there and walk out that door. But you know what? The ones that were willing to take the bullet in the head, that's the ones I want to have church with. Seriously. Um, in Matthew 10, 33, Jesus said, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, which is basically like the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So let's read 12. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And there's people out there that will tell you Paul's a false apostle because he changed the law. No, Christ changed the law. Well, not really. Verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Do you know there's churches called, uh, I think they're called Unitarian Universalist churches? And they teach that eventually everybody gets saved because, after all, God loves everybody. Even Satan's going to get saved after a while. Well, they turn Jesus into a liar. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Remember that church of a hundred people? Nah. Heaven is not going to need that many mansions. I don't believe. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Oh, yes. When you go to church and you look up at the pulpit and the altar and you see the guy behind it speaking, chances are, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. If you knocked on Billy Goat Graham's door, well, you couldn't get in there because he's he lives in a gated community and, and he's got probably a 12-foot high fence around his place with a locked gate. So you couldn't knock on his door and say, Hey, uh, Billy, uh, I, I haven't eaten in a week. Could you spare a sandwich? You think he'd, one of his people would give you one? Yeah, I know he's dead. But uh, his son, Franklin, his, he's, he's out there doing ministry stuff, supposedly. I wonder if he's any different. How about Benny Hinn? How about Kenneth Copeland, Jim Baker, any of those people flying around in Learjets? Think if they 
saw somebody that was disabled and lost their job and was kicked out of their apartment, you think they would do anything for them? Yeah, I don't know. Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Ah, we got to do the will of the Father. Maybe we need to find out what it is so we can do it. And, of course, there's churches that will teach you if you're doing this, if you're obedient, well, that's a heresy, that you're trying to earn your salvation. Yeah, they teach that repentance, being sorrowful for your sin and turning from it is even a work and a heresy. Really. I mean, you know, I just... And they only get away with this stuff because people refuse to read the scriptures. And if, then if they do, they're reading a wrong one like the NIV, which was a number one bestselling for at least one year. One year the NIV, at least one year that I know of, outsold the King James Bible. And the NIV turns Jesus the morning star you know, Revelation 22 turns him into the guy in Isaiah 14 that fell from heaven. You know, in the King James, Lucifer fell from heaven. And I'm sorry, the Luciferians and the Satanists know who Lucifer is. Even if people like James White, who's supposed to be a, a Bible scholar, doesn't know who Lucifer is, he says it's a Latin word and doesn't belong in the Bible. Well, guess what? Taco is a Spanish word. So I guess we better not use the word taco since it's a Spanish word and doesn't belong in the English language. 20% of English comes from Latin. Lucifer has reference to uh, light, as in Satan being an angel of light. Yeah, they delete Lucifer and insert morning star which jesus says he's the morning star so essentially they have jesus being the one that fell from heaven in isaiah 14 in the niv and the complete you ish bible by uh, i think his name is david stern he's supposed to be a messianic you know who his bible does the same thing only they don't call him Jesus, they call him Yeshua. So Yeshua is the morning star, and Yeshua, uh, well, the morning star fell from heaven in Isaiah 14 and is going down to the pit of hell to be covered with maggots and worms. Yeah. And these are the people that these church people fawn over. They bless the antichrist and if you don't know what an antichrist is let me give you the bible definition when i get done with this all right let's read uh matthew 7 22. many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in, and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works yeah we fed the homeless uh the 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 mexicans yeah and we fed the uh, somalians that came over to destroy your people do you know that the Me uh, mexico city is built on the capital of the aztec empire yeah it was called something else but and those that group of people the Aztecs did human sacrifice and cannibalism. And these are the ones that they're allowing into the country. And really, you want these people in, you know, the descendants of these people that did cannibalism and human sacrifices here? And these churches are 
feeding them, which is, you know, I'm not so much against it, but, you know, when I had an accident, a, a car accident, I was all busted up in a, a wheelchair for a while, and I tried to get some help. They wouldn't give me nothing. Nobody. Nobody would do anything for me. Absolutely nothing. But I hear Catholic churches are always passing out free meals to the descendants of those that practice cannibalism and human sacrifices. Uh, so, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, what is the definition of, of an antichrist? 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father Christ. And the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And if you don't know who is the only group of people that deny that Jesus is the Christ, well, I tell you what, there's millions of them over in the Middle East. And uh, they call themselves is Ray Lies. I am totally amazed at the number of people that are flocking to Rab Buys. And anything they say, they believe it. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable. I've been trying to go to different sites and warn people on YouTube and leave comments, but few believe anything unless it comes from the mouth of a rab by. You know, with the Noahide laws, they're, uh, if you're not familiar with it, I strongly suggest you look into it. But uh, there are laws on the books in the United States, and I'm sure Europe too, although I haven't checked into it, but uh, they can ban the New Testament as hate speech. It's coming. So, there is, I'm going to paraphrase an article that I found, and this guy uh, writes that uh, a very subtle attack on the Christian faith comes from the idea that the uh, New Testament was written in Hebrew, not Greek. And, of course, that's not true. The New Testament was written in Greek and, and not Hebrew. And people think, well, you know, it's is that really that big of a deal, you know? But, actually, it is an attack on the reliability of your Bible. You know, if the Greek text is corrupted and is not reliable, and they will say that the Greeks changed everything because they were a bunch of anti sem well then guess what the Bible's no good the New Testament's wrong that's their premise you know that's what they're trying to do the Protestants cry of sola scripture or the scripture alone 
is becomes meaningless. There would be no standard of truth. So, you know, once you discredit the New Testament, uh, you could be carried about with every wind of doctrine. And that's what Paul said. Beware that you're not carried about with every wind of doctrine. It's like being in a sailboat and you're at a pier and you didn't tie it up. And every time the wind blows, it goes somewhere else. Uh, and that's in Hebrews 2 and verse 1. Carried about with every wind of doctrine. So what they do, those that are pushing this Hebrew New Testament garbage, they claim that the Greeks... Uh, they Hellenized the New Testament and saying that it was influenced by Greek culture and thought. And then they'll tell you that, well, you know, since the Greek was uh, wrong, that your English Bible is wrong too. And this stuff is not of God. And it is always the same thing. It's the tactic of every major deceiving cult. Uh, Mormonism. Mormonisms, uh, they'll tell you, oh, well, yeah, the, the Bible's wrong. But Joseph Smith, he got it right. He got it straight from the angel's mouth on those gold tablets that they can't find. And then he looked through some kind of looking glass to translate it into English and then you got the Jehovah's Witnesses. They do the same thing. Do you know the Jehovah's Witnesses for a hundred years used the King James Bible? It wasn't until 1964 that they came up with their New World Order translation. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the New World translation. Or was I right the first time? A lot of bad things happened in 64. That's around the time Kennedy was killed. That was the time they took silver out of the coins. That was the time they took prayer and Bible reading out of public schools. 64 was a really, uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Herman's Hermits. God, I'm old. But, um, yeah. But that's, the, that's their tactics. They all claim that true Christianity was lost, and yet they were chosen to Redeliver the true message of Jesus and the apostles, right? And uh, uh, oh, and and the is and Islam, the Muslims, they also claim that Christians have uh, corrupted scriptures. And then you got the you know who's with their Hebrew New Testament, and they want to fix those anti-Semitic Greek New Testament texts. Yeah, like when they say that uh, when Jesus, they claim is Yeshua, and in Revelation 22, Yeshua is the morning star, and then you go to Isaiah 14 and find out the morning star fell from heaven. So Jesus equals Yeshua, which equals the morning star, which equals fallen from heaven, going to the pit of hell to be covered with worms and maggots. Yeah, let's listen to them. They really know what's going on, huh? And besides, those of you that have listened to me for a while, you know it was not the Romans that had Christ put to death. And we're going to find that. All right, so... They want us to think that the um, Hebrew New Testament, they want to fix the Bible, and they want to rely, have us rely on their knowledge of Jewish customs and figures of speech. So we need to sit at the feet of unbelieving rab eyes to understand what was really written. And then we need to conform to Jewish thought and rituals and traditions. Traditions, yeah. Jesus condemned traditions. Did you know that? Yeah. 
he condemned their traditions. But instead of going towards the gospel, they're leading us away from the gospel. When you read in Psalms chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, and Matthew 24 and verses uh, 35, God promised that he would preserve his words. So when they tell you that they're going to correct the scriptures, like people like James White, he says, well, you know, we know the Bible's got errors, but we know what they are, and we're going to correct, we are correcting them. Well, yeah, I don't think so. Do you know that, uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And in Matthew 1, verse 21 through 23, we read, now this is, an angel speaking. You find out, I'm not sure if it's in Matthew or one of the companion verses, it was Gabriel himself. And she shall bring forth a son, Mary, right? And thou shalt call his name Jesus, not Yeshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now these Hebrew so-called roots people will tell you Matthew was written in Hebrew. Well, if that was true, why would he, they say that Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us? I mean, if it was in Hebrew and everybody knew Hebrew, they would just say Emmanuel. Everybody would know what Emmanuel means if you knew Hebrew. It means God with us. But it says, which, which being interpreted is God with us. Because it was in Greek, not Hebrew. So, you know, just these people. You know who Yeshua is? To the Cha Bad group, Lubavitch, if you look up them, you know who Yeshua is? Rab I Menachem Schneerson. Yeah, he's been dead for a bunch of years, but they're expecting him to dig himself out of his grave and come back and he's going to lead um, the you-know-whos to rebuild the temple and then start doing sacrifice. That's who Yeshua is to these people. They, they don't know the Son and they don't know the Father either. So, who killed Jesus? In John 19, 12, and from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Who's him? Christ. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. Oh, but it was the Romans that killed Jesus. Wrong. Unless, of course, you want to believe the you-know-whos and believe the Bible was mistranslated by them Greeks. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, if thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And you know what? Most of these church people, they're looking for the Pope to be the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. I mean, really, almost all of them. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, there's a there's a fairly new thing now where they're saying uh, it's going to come out of Mus uh, the Muslims, the is Islam. Uh, if you ask me, you, you take the Catholics, the you know who's, and Islam, and put them in a bag, shake them up, and throw them out, pour them out. You don't know which one would go to hell quicker. I don't know. 
All right, let's take a look at Ma Book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, who? Jesus. And they say, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashen hands? Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with washing your hands, but I'm sure they had a little ritual that they had to do. You know, maybe they washed their hands, but they did it the wrong way. You know, instead of starting with your left hand, they started with their right hand. And instead of their hands being point, you know, palms up, uh, you know, they, they didn't do it the right way. You know, I don't know. Verse 6, he, Jesus, answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, the people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. And you know what, people? I have gone to pre-trib rapture websites trying to warn these people, posting scriptures that clearly show that the pre-trib rapture is a lie. And you know what one of their arguments is? Not the Bible. The Jewish wedding tradition. Oh yes, the bride is in her little cubby hole and the, the groom comes and then he... He comes there and he does something and then he leaves for a little bit and then he comes back later and retrieves her. Or whatever their little silly little argument is. I don't even know because I don't really care. But traditions. Really, you're going to prove a false doctrine by you-ish traditions. Really. And they do. It's unbelievable. And these are the people that are going to turn you in for believing in Christ. Your own family, church people. Uh, it's just, it's coming, people. I did a Bible study on Revelation chapter 12, the flood of the dragon. And that is... Well, you should watch it. If, if any of you new listeners have not watched it, you should watch it. I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube. When they boot me off, I might be, you might be able to find me on BitChute, but when that's gone, when I'm off YouTube, that's it. I don't think I'm going to be doing anything else. I'm going to take that as a sign from the Lord to get my house in order, to get to where I've got to go and get out of town and like I say I pray please uh, that uh, my little situation in Arkansas with that uh, be reconciled and that uh, the Lord judge between me and him so people I want to thank you um, for everything all glory to Christ all glory to the Father stay close to Jesus people it's the United States is not going back to the way it was it's not it's never gonna happen they've got everything set up that they need to do the surveillance is done the uh, they're gonna probably get rid of cash and go to a uh, a cashless society prop maybe a chip in the right hand and then the forehead maybe I don't know things are getting real oh I was uh, I'm in um, Palm Beach County and I noticed they were taking down um, green wooden telephone poles uh, the green ones are fairly new 
And they were taking them down because they're putting up concrete poles for power and telephone and whatever else they're doing. And I thought, why in the world are they doing this? Well, I looked at all the street lights, and the street lights have those little antennas now on top of them, which they didn't have years ago. They're five. One, uh, uh, I'm sorry. They are the uh, the G one two three four five, and the power lines that they're having to run to power those things. The the power lines are thick, heavy copper. And the, the wooden telephone poles will not support the weight. So they're getting rid of these brand, uh, not brand new, but pretty new wooden telephone poles and putting up concrete poles. And they were doing this, uh, I noticed, uh, a couple days ago. You know, here it is. They got the quarantine going on. And yet they're out working. Yeah. And I've been noticing all these little antennas on top of all the light poles. Um I was wondering where these antennas were, but I've been paying attention. And uh, they're doing it, I'm sure, all over the country. I was traveling a few months ago and all over the country, little tiny towns, and they got cameras set up on the uh, these little U.S. highways and stuff. And I was noticing cameras on the interstates back in the late 90s. A truck driver pointed that out to me. Uh, totally totally blew me away i was like wow yeah i was on the cb at a truck stop and one of the drivers is like any of you all noticed all the cameras going up on the interstate sure enough i started paying attention yep there they were cameras and i noticed they are in the rest areas in florida where i live they've been there for years yeah people surveillance they're they're ready to spring the trap shut now, in Mark 13, verse 9, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. You know, people, that's if, if you're to be led into captivity, you're supposed to go into captivity for the faith. You are allowed to defend your family if, uh, if they're just coming to kill you because they don't like you because you're white. Well, you're more than allowed to defend your family. Uh, they even said that uh, he that provided not for his own and his own house, especially of his own house, hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. But if, if you're to be led into captivity for your faith, the Holy Spirit will speak through you and you will know that you're on your way to the kingdom. You get your head chopped off for the kingdom, guaranteed ticket to heaven. Guaranteed. But there's going to be a group in Revelation 12. I'm going to post the link to the uh, Flood of the Dragon. I got a series on Revelation chapter 12, three videos. I truly believe that a remnant's going to go into the wilderness, and I do do believe that the Lord will provide manna for his church. I just absolutely believe it. But all these so-called churchgoers, they're convinced that they're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture, and, and then it's going to be the Antichrist, who they bless, that's going to be persecuted. Little do they know that the Antichrist, who they bless, their chosen people, are going to be the ones doing this to the church they're going to be totally shocked some of them will wake up as to who really jacob israel is when they find out that who it is that's being persecuted and who's jacob israel my opinion 
the people that printed the Bibles, the people that built the churches. And it wasn't Sub-Sahara Africa, it wasn't India, it wasn't China, and it wasn't Japan, and it wasn't South America. That's uh, just, you know, my opinion. Have we been perfect? Absolutely not. But we were the ones that spread the gospel to the whole world. All right, everybody, stay close to Jesus, not Yeshua. You know what? Anybody that uses Yeshua, I'm beginning to think they're either spiritually don't know what they're talking about or they're actually a deceiver. I don't know. I mean, it's I'm I've had it with them. I've had it with them. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. In Jesus' precious name, amen.